Hello from the ramp here at Leicester Airfield where I'm standing in front of one of the helicopters which I've recently learned to fly as part of the process of gaining a commercial helicopter pilot licence. But my career in aviation didn't start with rotary, it began a few years ago when I got a national private pilot licence to fly three-axis microlites. This was a fantastic, fun and affordable way of gaining some wings and getting some experience as a pilot. When I got the chance to start learning to fly helicopters in 2019, I jumped in with both feet. What a fantastic opportunity. But by that stage, I'd logged around 140 hours on aeroplanes, and I was really hoping that some of that experience would help me to find the helicopter training a little bit easier. There were some major challenges along the way learning to fly helicopters, and although there are some really obvious similarities, there are also some pretty major differences, which did take a bit to get my head around. I'm yet to fly an aircraft with an autopilot, but without one it's fair to say the helicopter requires the pilot to be much more hands-on than their fixed-wing counterpart. A well-trimmed aeroplane is a pretty stable platform, leaving you with spare hands for carrying out other cockpit tasks, whereas the lack of inherent stability in a helicopter requires near-constant physical input from the pilot. Now we all know that the flight isn't over of course until you've taxied it right back up to the FBO and shut down the engine but I must admit that uh, taxiing tricycle undercarriage aeroplanes which is the only type I've experienced so far is a bit easier than manoeuvring a helicopter near the ground. The hover, the hover taxi is one of the most challenging things to get your head round and to physically get the motor skills to be able to do without too much difficulty. Once you get the hang of it you kind of wonder why you ever found it particularly difficult but it certainly took me quite a few hours to get my head around it. One of the reasons for that is, is because you've really got to be hands-on with everything the whole time. Your right hand is on the cyclic the whole time, making sure that the helicopter stays in equilibrium. And you've also got your left hand on the collective, making sure that you maintain the same distance above the ground. And as you use the cyclic, you're changing the attitude of the disc, which means you need to adjust your power setting in the collective as well. You're also using your feet the whole time too, because all the controls have an effect on each other, meaning if you use more power, you need to use more pedal, etc, etc. So it does get quite full on. It really means that you've got no hand spare to operate any of the controls on here. So you really want to make sure that you've got all that set correctly before you ever need to taxi. And also, if you want to operate the radio, you hope you can do it with your cyclic control and also switching frequency on there as well. Another thing that's great about aeroplanes, of course, is that they're basically more affordable for that Sunday jaunt, the £100 hamburger, as they call it in the United States. And helicopters per hour are considerably more expensive, no matter what way you cut it. But they are also more flexible. If you want to land in a country house hotel garden or a lawn outside the pub, then you can actually do that in a helicopter, which really is another level of fun. Now, if you're wondering about getting yourself a PPLH so that you can go and explore the skies in a helicopter yourself, there are some requirements that uh, you need to look at. First of all, the legal minimum requirement for the training is 45 hours, although because helicopters are so difficult and tricky to master, most people take considerably longer than that. The average, I think, is somewhere between 60 and 70 hours. So factor that into your cost uh, analysis as well. You'll need a medical, of course. A Class 2 is enough if you're planning on stopping at PPL level, but if you're going to go all the way to commercial like I have, it's very advisable to make sure you can get a Class 1 medical before you proceed, because that will be a bit of a roadblock for you if you can't do it. There are nine ground exams to sit, one of which is air law, which you have to sit before you're allowed to go solo. And you also, as part of the process, need to sit a two hour, it's roughly two hour skills test, which includes a navigation part and then a general handling on the aircraft part as well. And you'll also do a qualifying cross country flight, which needs to be more than 100 nautical miles and you land at two different airfields on your way round. For all of this, I would suggest that you budget around 20 to 25,000 pounds to make sure that you're able to complete the PPL course. And as somebody who loves flying both types, and I really genuinely mean that, I haven't flown the aeroplane for over a year now while I've been concentrating on the helicopter training, and I'm really, really excited to get back to doing it again because it is just great fun and a different kind of flying to what I experience in the helicopter. But doing both is great. 
And if you've ever wondered what it's like to experience flying in a helicopter, then do check out the Rory On Air YouTube channel where there's lots of videos from my flying trips in the helicopter and in the aeroplane. It is a bit of a magic carpet and that is one of the reasons why I absolutely love it. Well, I really hope you found the information in this video useful and inspiring. And if, of course, you'd like to go and learn to fly yourself, whether that be helicopters, aeroplanes, gliders, or all sorts of other things, then do check out Flyer magazine. They've got an excellent learning to fly supplement, which uh, has lots of useful information that will help you, guide you along the way to getting a license of various different types. Also, it's worth noting that this uh, video has been supported by Flyer magazine. So thank you very much to them for that. And you, I would really urge you to go and check out their YouTube channel as well, Flyer Mag on YouTube. You can find that by a simple search. There's lots of interviews and content on there, which uh, hopefully you'll find really interesting and will also help guide you in your journey to becoming a pilot. If, of course, you already are one, you'll find lots of useful information and uh, entertaining stuff on there too. So do check out Flyer Mag online. Well, thank you very much indeed for watching from a busy airfield here at Leicester. Rory on Air signing off from another video, and I'll see you next time. Cheerio.